Hey guys, uh, so today I'd like to just share with you a little bit about how I created this image here that you're looking at. It's a very simple synth recipe that was used to generate all the mechs in this scene. And then I, of course, went in and added some more detail using synth as well. Let's get started. First off, I'll mention that you'll get this file called smex.zip. Unzip it and just put it in your synth master folder. So see right here, I've got it smex. And inside it, you'll see that there's a bunch of different inserts as well as the thumbnails for the inserts. And furthermore, there are only six. So there's two from the top, two from the side, and two from the front. Of course, you can always add more as you like. In fact, it's fairly easy to do so, but I'll show you the inserts here in uh, just a second. So let's get started with a new scene. And I want to first talk about these inserts. I'm going to go into the SMEX K-Pack, and you'll see that we have two from the front, two from the side, two from the top, and they're all really from the top because that's the way inserts work. Let's just take one and show you what we're talking about. So if I grab this insert and I add it to this cube, notice what's going on. It's actually using a Boolean intersect to figure out how to interact with the target object, which is the cube. And notice it can be placed on the front, on the side, or on the top. So I'll escape out of that. I just want to show you that, make sure you understand what's going on with these inserts. So let's jump into synth. And the first thing we do is we're going to rename our default layer to front. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make sure that check mark for this insert for this layer is on and I am going to select the front O2 insert and then I'm going to click this button here which says fills a layer with selected category and so what that did is that all of these layers now have the same K pack I'm going to turn this one on and I'm going to select the second front and then I'm going to go tab into here select this front and I'll just press do it when I do that, you see that we don't really have anything, and that's because we've set the wrong placement style. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to hit the clear button, clear that out, and I'll go in here, and I will just press the grid button, which gives us a one-by-one one grid. And I'll turn that on now. I'm going to press do it, and you can see it works. And if I go ahead and update the main seed and do it again, I'm going to get a, the other version. So I only have two options here two different versions that I'm actually going to propagate into this target model. One thing I'll mention is that I can clear this mesh by hitting this button, but I can also use this little button right here, which clears just that layer. So now let's talk a little bit about another thing with regard to this particular insert with this layer. I'm going to actually drag this cube box out a little bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to clear this out and you can see it's kind of wide now. And when I hit do it, the object hasn't changed its size. And why is that? Well, that's because we have proportional aspect ratio on. So let's turn those off and then I'll press do it again. And now you see it does change its size. So that's important to know. Move it back down to something that we like. Okay, now we have the front done. I'm gonna duplicate that, turn the first one off and I'll go in here and I'll call this side. And I'm gonna tab into my box select the side tab back out for the side I'm going to choose the two different side inserts and with that done I'll press the do it and there's the side and then I'll turn that off I'll clear that layer I'll, I'll duplicate that and I'll call it top and and by now you understand what we're doing here I'll tab into this select the top face I'll go into each one of these choose top and choose top and make sure this is turned on and we'll say do it and there's the top and again if I turn on auto update and just press this button I'll just toggle back and forth between them so you'll get the idea of how that works and I'll clear this off actually before I clear this off let me mention that I'm gonna tab out of this and I'm gonna hit a twice to deselect everything and with nothing selected I'll tab back in and I'm gonna click on this little button right here and now when I tab in here Notice that that button tells me what face is associated with this. And this will tell me that face is associated with side. And this will tell me that face is associated with front. So now that we know all these faces are associated with the correct versions, I will go in and select none, which is Alt A or AA twice. And I'm gonna clear all of these, make sure there's nothing set. 
And with that done, I'm going to use a little bit of an experimental feature, which we'll be updating to make it easier to understand. But no phases are selected here. Let's turn on all of these. And let's do it. And now you can see that we've created our mech, but we do have a problem. Notice that it doesn't go all the way down to the feet. And what's going on there? Well, let's take a look and let's just let's turn off this one and this one. So this particular insert doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. Remember, the box sits on the floor. This is not. Well, what's going on? Well, it's because we have this one-to-one -one at the top. It's filling, but it's only going down as far as the original insert was created. So what can we do? Well, I'll go into transformation and I'll scroll down on scale Z. I'm going to just had 200%. So that's actually going to make it three times as long as normal. That'll cover just about any size. And, and in fact, we're going to have the same problem from the front and from the side as well. So I'm going to select those and I'll go into Z scale also. And the Z scale, remember, is with respect to the normal of the face that's being applied. So in the case of the side, the Z scale is this direction. It's the global X scale. So let's go ahead and take that and do 200 there. And that'll cover virtually any version of what we're trying to create. And then we'll go into the front and we're going to do the same thing. Now, of course, when we do it, we're going to get a lot of wires, right? And that's going to be a possible issue. But I'll show you how to fix that here in a second. So I'm going to turn these off. So some of you may see that I have a little bit of a smoothing error right here. So I'm going to just go into my modifiers for our box object and I'm going to add a weighted normal and say keep sharp and that fixes that particular error. And now when I generate a new iteration, you will see that the weighted normal stays at the bottom. And why is that? Well, that's a kit ops feature. And if yours isn't doing that, you need to go into preferences, go into kit ops. And in general, you'll see that we have sort modifiers and there's the, put the weld at the bottom, put bevels at the bottom, put weighted normals at the bottom. So this button is checked. If I turn this off, that weight of normal will not be at the bottom. So just let you know that you might want to use these sort modifiers to help synth, make sure that it puts the correct order on some of your manually applied modifiers. So what I want to do next is I want to show you some of these inserts. So I've created a new Blender file. I'll go into kit ops. I'll go into the mechs and I'll kind of show you like a, maybe a front insert and how that works. So with it selected, I'll hit edit insert and here it is. Now I put this picture in this particular one so I could actually look at it. And I can kind of figure out what this particular mech might be like. Now, this isn't perfect, but I did use that image to sketch it out. And then if you tab into this, you'll see it's just got a bunch of vertices. And, and we just use extrude vertices to create this. And if I look at the modifiers, I have a bevel. It can control radiuses if I want to. to. I can go in here and just adjust the bevel weight and tab back out. And you can see now that's round. So I have a bevel modifier on there. I've got a mirror modifier, so whatever I edit on this side gets mirrored over. And I have a solidify modifier that actually takes all that and makes it long, right? And then when I look at my kit op settings, this wire is set to intersect. And this wire is the main object, and it's set to be a wire, a placement object. And as a placement object, it doesn't render. And because all these placement objects are the exact same for the front insert, it will place each front insert in the exact same position. That's how the inserts are laid out. And as you can imagine, I can just grab any picture I want and I can sketch out something similar to what that might look like. And that becomes my insert. Uh, so let's quickly talk about creating a mesh from all this mess. Well, first we want to find the version we like. Here's four. Let's try six. It's a different, slightly different. Let's stay with six. With the target object, in this case called box selected, we'll go into our tools and we'll bake the object. And once we've baked it, we're going to remove unused wire inserts and keep clicking this button until you get them all gone. And now that they're gone, we can tab into this and we can see this. Uh, the last thing we want to do is probably jump over to kit ops and we're going to make sure we're off smart mode and turn off auto select insert also and then remove kit ops props. So now this is not any sort of a kit ops 
object and we should be good. And over here in my inserts collection, I can right click and say, just delete hierarchy because we don't have anything left in there for this particular object. And that's pretty much it. So how would I move on from here? If I ever want to modify this object that I'm going to want to be careful of is this object has its own set of normals because we had that weighted normal applied. So for instance, if I go in and I add a bevel and I make it 0 0.002, let's get that and add the shading to be segments one. Notice that we've got a weird shading problem going on, right? And if I look at my vertex normals, you'll see that this auto smooth is right. So what's going on? Well, that's because in our geometry data, we have already, we already have a set of custom normals. So I need to clear that normal data and then this will work. And then I can go back in and adjust my bevel. I might want to go, go to the geometry and turn off the clamp. So now you can see the bevel showing up. I'll probably go in the bevel under shading and put hard normals on it as well. So now I've got a little tiny bevel. And I can also go in if I want and hit tab. And I can select faces, different faces. And I can go back into synth and start adding different cutters and, and objects on top of that as well. And so that's the next phase for this. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, but that's pretty much how we did it in this scene. So if we take a quick look at the scene, you can see that we've got two major mechs in the scene, one in the background here, one in the foreground. I've got a very strong volumetrics effect, which helps hide a lot of the fact that these don't have a lot of detail. But I have gone in and I have added detail to these objects in areas where I know they might be seen. So you can see there's some detail here and here. I didn't put anything up here because it's out of the camera view. If I look over here and, and look at this mech, I've got some other details showing up on him as well, just to add some overall detail. So back to our camera view, you can see that we've got some little detail up there, over here and down there. And that's what I did is I quickly just added some details. So when I go back into my volumetric rendered view, you can see some of the outline of the details. So that's how that render was created. It was actually created in only a couple hours from start to finish. So I hope that's helpful. This mech K-Pack comes with synth. So look for it at the store where you purchase synth. So thanks for watching. So long. I'll see you online.